I'm going to show you some tricks you can use in order to remove the distortion that's inherent in any photograph taken with a fisheye lens. To do this, we are going to use the adaptive wide angle filter that's in Photoshop. So here I have brought the image into Adobe Camera Raw or ACR. And now I can do all of the ordinary adjustments I would do to try to optimize the quality of the photograph. And as you can see, I've already made some adjustments to the highlights, the shadows, and the black levels, and you know, whatever else you think needs to be to be done to optimize your photograph. But for the purposes of getting rid of the distortion, we need to check one other parameter. If you go down here in optics, there's this parameter called use profile corrections. This is typically checked by default. And if so, Adobe Camera Raw is trying to will try to use this make and model of lens and try to correct distortions caused by it. And you could use this to remove distortion in your fisheye lens too if if your fisheye lens is one of the ones that you can select. It doesn't always work that well. And so we're going to use the adaptive wide angle filter instead. And so we will want to uncheck that checkbox. Now you can click on open to bring the file into Photoshop. Then go to filter and then adaptive wide angle. And we will enter the adaptive wide angle filter workspace. The way this program works is you can imagine your image being printed on a sheet of rubber. We're going to tell the filter that certain lines ought to be straight. And then the filter is going to distort, pull, stretch that sheet of rubber to try to force the image to match the line that we are telling it is, should be straight. Some preliminaries. First, look down in the lower left-hand corner, and you'll see that it was able to find in the metadata that's included in the file that I used a Canon EOS 5D Mark II to take this photograph. And as a result, it was able to set the crop factor to the appropriate value for the sensor used in that camera. You'll also notice that it was not able to identify the lens model, and so the focal length is just set to some arbitrary value. But don't worry about that because we're going to calibrate the filter and tell it how much distortion that the, uh, the lens has introduced. Since we're not going to pay attention to that, we can unclick the as shot. We need to change the correction factor from perspective to fisheye because we're working with a fisheye lens. I also want to make sure that I can see the entire image in my workspace. So I will bring the scale down until I see the entire image. The main tool we will be using throughout this process is found in the upper left hand corner. It's the constraint tool. And it's what we're going to use to draw those lines onto the so-called rubber sheet that will inform the filter how much the image should be distorted. The first line we draw is going to be used to calibrate the filter. So look for a line in your image that should be straight, but is in fact ends up curved because of the distortion. And find a line that covers as much of the frame as possible. The edge of this elevated door seems like a pretty good choice. So I'm going to go to the upper right hand corner of the door. And I can see on the right hand side, there's a magnified view so I can very precisely position my cursor on the edge of the door, hold down the left button on my mouse, and then draw a line down to the lower right hand corner of that door, like so. Now a line appears and there's a square in the middle. The calibration is performed by dragging that square until the line matches the curve of that elevator door or whatever the straight line is, that line that should be straight that you picked. 
voila. Okay, now the system is calibrated. But there's one other thing we know about that line. Not only is it straight, but we know that it's vertical. So the next step we can do is go in and right click on that line and check vertical. And that will force that line to be vertical. Now the process is to just to continue to repeat that with different straight lines in the image until the image looks the way we want. So we can go over to the, this door on the right hand side once again, draw a line following the edge of that door. And now you can see, since the system is calibrated, it knows how to draw that line, with the, including the distortion, so it's curved. Once it's done, that elevated door edge will be straight. Once again, we know that it's vertical, so we can right-click and click on Vertical. By the way, if you know that a line is at some arbitrary angle and not necessarily vertical or horizontal, you can rotate the line by grabbing the circle at the edge and changing that. You see now the line turns to green, meaning that we have arbitra did an arbitrary rotation. But in our case, we certainly want that door to be straight, so we'll click it on straight and it turns to this magenta color, which is used for straight vertical lines. Uh, we also want to identify horizontal lines in the image. An example might be this crease in the carpet. So we'll go from one end of that carpet to the other, right click, and this time click on horizontal. There's not a lot of horizontal lines in this image, so it's a bit tricky. Uh, but I can find some due to patterns. For example, I happen to know that the elevator doors are directly opposite each other. So this line connecting the tops of the elevator doors also should be horizontal. I also know that the doors at the front of the corridor should be horizontal and vertical, but they're kind of tiny, so I can't do things very accurately there. No problem, I can go over to the toolbar and pick up the zoom tool and zoom in on that area. Go back to the constraint tool, and now I know that the top of the doors should be straight and horizontal, as should the bottom of the doors. And of course, the doors themselves should be vertical. I can use the shortcut keys, the same shortcut keys you use in Photoshop, i.e. Command plus and minus on the Mac, Control plus or minus on a PC, to zoom in or out. Now all we have to do is to continue to find lines that we know should be straight and draw them, even if they're not vertical or horizontal. Just knowing they're straight. So this edge of the ceiling ought to be straight. So we can draw that line and let that be straight. Same thing on the other side. Make that straight. And just continue doing that until you're happy with the image. You can add as many or as few lines as you like in order to get the effect you want. If you're very fastidious, you'll want all the lines to be straight, so you'll add lots of these constraints. Basically, any line that the viewer 
things ought to be straight are ones that you need to be concerned about. There may be other lines that are not in straight, that they don't matter so much. Uh, one thing you know is we've distorted this rubber sheet. We've ended up with some gaps on either side. You're going to have to fill those up gaps with content-aware fill or just crop them out. And as a result, even though you may think you're going to crop out this area, you probably want to continue to add constraints even in these regions like this one because you may need that area for use in the content-aware fill. Okay, it's starting to look pretty good. I might want to zoom in and check some of those doors that are closer to the uh, entranceway and make sure that those all look straight and vertical. Again, maybe most people wouldn't even notice these, but if you're a very uh, fastidious person, you probably want to make sure that all those are straight. Okay, it's starting to look pretty good here. Um, I think there may be a few more areas that I feel that I need to make straight. Oh, one area I think I want to make straight is just right down the dead center of this image. When I took this picture, I tried to make that be dead center, which would cause it to be straight and centered even in the fisheye view. But it doesn't look like I got that perfectly right when I took the picture, but I can correct that now by again drawing a constraint right up the center there and saying, yeah, that ought to have been a vertical line because that's how I composed the picture and, and get it there. Okay, it looks like I'm done, but one of the things I need to do is decide how much area I'm going to crop and how much is going to be filled with content-aware fill. There's no sense in sending a, a lot of transparent pixels back to Photoshop that I'm just going to crop out. So I'm now going to increase the scale and kind of zoom in until I get to a point where I think, yeah, that's, that's probably close to what I'm going to crop. And then click OK. Now I could fill in some of these areas, say up here near the top, with uh, content-aware fill by selecting that transparent area doing Edit, Content-Aware Fill, and select, I think that all of this area is quite acceptable. Ah, that looks okay, so I will go okay. Now, uh, see, this is a problem you have with content to wear fill. Sometimes you get that little line. So let's try that again. I'll go back. This time I'm going to go select, modify, and expand. I'm going to expand about 10 pixels. Now I'm going to try content to wear fill. I'm going to take out this part of the door because that's not appropriate. But the rest of this area kind of is. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, it didn't do a great job here. Uh, I could try to fix that up, but you know, honestly, I feel like just cropping it would be fine at this point. So I'm going to just crop out that 
part there. I'm not even going to try to fill these areas. Those would be very hard to fill with com content to wear fill. It'd be a lot of uh, fixing up to do. The bottom looks okay. And there we are with the final photograph. And of course, at this point, we can add whatever layers, adjustment layers we want. Maybe bring up the shadow areas. And play around with it as much as you want. So thanks for watching, and I hope this is helpful.